You remember that girl I was telling you about? It's not gonna work out. It's our signs, we're not compatible. But I'm gonna check out a fortune teller to see what's in the cards for us. Damn, don't you know this place is dangerous, man? How so? He is a great guy. A little crazy, like me. Sometimes I think we're a little too much alike. Makes me realize how true that saying is, you know, that opposites attract. Sounds to me like you, you guys know, need I some I still space. can't believe that wedding's been postponed. Wait, what? <sighs> well, I'm sure Jim's glad you weren't there. We caught him a hooker. Nice. What can I do for you? You got a pen? Yeah, I need it back. On top of that, he embarrassed the hell out of me last weekend. What did he do? My family, they were visiting last weekend. So he comes over and he starts saying hi to everyone. He's shaking hands with my father. He's talking football with my brother. He's complimenting my mother. Suddenly, he's Mr. Outgoing. The whole family loves him, but I'm just staring at him with daggers in my eyes. I didn't even invite him, you know? Anyway, we all go out to dinner, and he just keeps drinking glass after glass after glass of red wine. I knew this guy, right? Well, actually, he was a friend of a friend. He was madly in love with this chick. I mean, he tried everything in his power to get with her, but she was not feeling him like that. And I mean, like, he was red hot for this girl. Like, she was always ice cold to him. He went to one of those neon sign basement room fortune teller places. And let's say the cause wasn't in his favor. There was no love in his immediate future or in his near future for that matter. So we do this whole cheesy thing where we wheel in a giant cake and we sing him this happy end of your life song, you know, because he's getting married. And then, bam, this scantily clad girl pops out of the top of the cake and she continues our shitty little song with this uh, sultry falsetto voice. Now keep in mind, this isn't a stripper. This is a hooker, a straight up whore. Well, anyway, so he took the picture, gave it to the fortune teller, and in his fitted rage, just like, I hope all our relationships end up in misery. Fortune teller smiled, took the picture, and his five dollars and said she can make that happen. She walks over to Jim and takes off her shirt. There's no bra, big ass titties. She shoves them in his face. He's not expecting this at all. Jim already feels like he's married, you know, because they've been dating for like five years now. Damn. Anyway, the hooker now violently shoves him against the wall. Halfway through the meal, he's slurring his words. His eyes are getting this glazed over look. I tell him to finish up, it's time to go. But he's being a stubborn bastard and he insists on staying. Keep in mind, of course, that my poor dad is paying for all this wine. I even tried to lie and pretend I was feeling sick, but it didn't work. One more glass and now he's swaying in his chair. Soon after I heard from another source that she ended up getting into a relationship with this owner from this swanky bar on the Upper East Side. They were madly in love. And after a year of them going out, he proposed and they were engaged. So while they were celebrating at his bar, he went to toast to everybody's health. He ends up choking on a pretzel. He chokes on a pretzel. He ends up just dying in front of the whole crowd and his ride to be. Jim's face still buried in her knocker, so all we can hear are these muffled screams. Now, I thought these were moans of pleasure, okay? We all did, because, you know, Jim's a moaner, and we learned that on our camping trip. That, of course, is the moment that my dad decides to go into his classic funny story that he tells to every man in my life. And now, of course, I know there's no escaping at all. I feel like I'm being held prisoner while I'm eating. Now try and smile. 
It is a funny story, though, and my boyfriend's laughing, but I could tell he was getting sick. Every time he laughed, he quickly closed his mouth and he swallowed really, really hard. Reached the point where every time there was a frickin' punchline, he's like clasping his mouth shut with his hand. First, though, the hooker pulls off her miniskirt and throws it into the crowd. Now, all the guys are just fucking yelling and chanting Jim's name. Jim, Jim, Jim. What if I don't? And then, the pièce de résistance. She takes off her panties, and it's like the Mayan apocalypse. Everyone goes fucking crazy. His fit of giggles just gets worse and worse. He's like sweating. His hands are shaking really bad. My dad finally gets to the punchline, and my boyfriend just loses it. Do you imagine how traumatic that can be? After a year and a half, she ends up meeting this pre-med student from the Midwest. Now, they're walking in the city deep in conversation. He's not paying attention. This cab is turning a corner. He steps into the street. <laughs> Head on collision, boom. Kills him instantly. One cheeseburger coming up. Put it in a cup. Put it in a cup. He's like clasping his mouth shut with one hand, clenching the table with the other. The whole family is laughing, but everyone goes silent when they see his reaction. And that's when she raises up her panties and then stuffs them in Jim's mouth. Ah, and that gosh. shuts him up. So anyway, she's like gyrating against him for a while and Jim's just laying against her. Finally, she backs up, letting him go. He just falls to the ground. And then, like a dam bursting, his hands go flying off his face, his cheeks puff up, and this torrent of vomit just streams out all over the table, splashes my brother, my mother starts screaming, I'm trying to apologize. That's awful. While the coroner is rolling the boyfriend off in the ambulance, who comes out of nowhere? Who? The guy from the beginning, the friend of a friend, the one that was madly in love with her. Wow. Just comes out of nowhere with me. Talk about serendipity like a mom. <laughs> There's a large red splotch of blood on his back. The hooker screams and runs out. I should have gotten out of there when I could. I never should have gone along with his stubbornness. Everyone's just panicking now. And so Tony runs over and pulls the panties out of Jim's mouth so that he could talk. Yeah. That's when I noticed there was a hook on the wall. A long, pointy hook for, you know, a clock or something. Oh, my God. Yeah. After he hear them going out, he proposes to her, she says yes. So the next day, he goes to work. He's on the phone with his bride-to-be. He's waiting for the elevator. I would have dumped him on the spot. Yeah, well, I thought about it. But my friend Susan, you, you might remember her. Her wedding's coming up, and I really want to have a date. She is not the only one who can get a guy. Elevator comes. He's all lovey dovey on the phone. Hangs up. Gets onto the elevator, except the elevator car doesn't show up. Just a shaft. Ends up falling to his death. Man. Oh my God. She must have pushed him up against the wall and practically ground him up and down on it. Fuck. Wound could take like up to a month to heal. Oh, so yeah, that's why the wedding's been postponed. Cancel the cheeseburger. <laughs>